Didn't see you there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome back. My name is Addie Gannon of Well Loved Clothing. And I am in my kitchen with my sewing machine, which I hope you know means that I am doing a thrift flip today. Oh, I just love thrift flips, especially when it gets into spring. I just want to tear all my clothes apart and remake them into new things. It's like my version of spring cleaning. So we are going to take a couple of pieces that I, of course, have had in my closet for a while, and I'm going to flip them from not so wearable thrifted pieces to very wearable, very cute, ready to go pieces. Lots of adjectives on my brain today. So I am pumped. This might end up being one of my favorite thrift flips because I have some pieces that I'm so excited about. I normally go into these things without plans and today I actually have a couple of plans because I am pumped about one in particular. You'll find out what it is, but I'm going to show you the before, my inspiration, and the after, obviously, and I'm just so excited to get into it. So let's start sewing. The first piece that we are going to focus on today is right along with the spring 2020, summer 2020, whatever trends that you're focusing on right now. And it is this gorgeous white tiered gauzy dress from Target. So my mom bought this, it ended up not fitting her, and so I was the lucky winner of the dress, and I am very excited about it. It's this beautiful white flowy dress with these amazing tiers, and it hits right about ankle length. This gauzy, flowy fabric. As you can probably see, it's a little bit too big for me, so it's gonna be relatively easy to do what we wanna do with this dress. So my idea for this dress is to chop it into a two-piece. Yes, we always make two pieces here. Getting into spring and summer, I think it's just a lot cooler sometimes to have that breeze, I guess, up your shirt, kind of awkward, but I think it'll be really cute with this piece. I am looking at these gauzy fabrics and flowy two pieces, and I think it'll be so much fun to change this dress into a two piece. I think this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge today because of the tiers, but we're gonna give it another tier because why not? So, taking inspiration from all of these photos, let's get started! Starting off with that armpit shot, always a wonderfully awkward place to start, and I am pinning down the sides just to my waist because I'm going to make this shirt into a little crop top, so I also need to pin where I want that crop top to be. I spent a hot minute trying to figure out how I was going to sew this thing before just chopping off the bottom skirt to make the crop top easier to sew. And in true Addie Gun in fashion, I went ahead and sewed down the side of it after pinning it instead of recognizing that there were two layers and I was probably going to have to take it apart. So this is a major character flaw of mine that I just jumped straight into it and I had to tear it apart and then build it separately to sew back together again, just like I did in my last video. you think a girl would learn after the first time. <laughs> so I ripped the seams out and cut up the sides so that I could make it smaller. I knew I was going to take it in about two inches on each side, so it wasn't that bad if I just cut the seam out. Now that the piece is separated into lining and outer shell, I am going to pin down the sides of just the lining and then I'll do this with the outer shell later, but I'm going to sew that piece first so that I can sew them together. I didn't rip out the whole armhole because I only needed the side to be taken in a couple of inches so instead of having to do the whole piece again I just ripped out maybe a couple of inches more of the seam at the armhole. So I'm sewing the lining and showing you how cute my new little thread scissors are and repeating the pinning and sewing process with the outer shell. Once I finished sewing the outer shell back together I then needed to reattach the lining to the outside so I had to cut the excess fabric off and then sew the two pieces together at the armpit where I'd cut it. Which now means that the correct process of taking this shirt in is complete and we can fix this little ruffle on the bottom and cut the lining. As you can see, the lining is longer than the shirt. I'm gonna keep this edge raw. I think it's very cute, but I do need to cut that lining a couple of inches shorter than the actual shirt so it doesn't show. So here I'm just chopping off that bottom piece and cleaning up my edges. So the shirt is done. 
Oh my goodness, how cute. It's just this little peplum-y type top, but it's more of a border than even a peplum. And I think it's gonna look so cute once we get our skirt done too. So we are now going to take the bottom piece of fabric and turn it into a skirt. So let's do it. So the lining of this skirt is more stiff and the outside is a lot more flowy, which is pretty typical for most linings on dresses. So I am gonna be sewing them separately and then attaching them at the end after the elastic is put on. So I'm starting by zigzag stitching the top of the outer shell. You know we love our zigzag stitches here at Well Loved. And then I am folding it over to make a casing for the elastic, but I'm gonna be double rolling it. I just like the zigzag stitch, especially with thinner fabric, because it gives something for the stitch to hold onto. Once I have my first hem in place, I am taking my elastic and measuring out how thick my waistband needs to be. Pretty typical way to do elastic around here and pretty much anywhere that sews elastic, but I'm making a casing for it. So my elastic is an inch thick, so I'm gonna do about an inch with a quarter inch allowance for the seam and for just some space for the elastic to wiggle, but not roll. Which then leads to the longest straight stitch of my life. All the way around this waistband was insane, but we had to do it to make that elastic casing. Once the casing was complete, I measured the elastic around my waist. I always like to have more elastic than I'm going to need because it makes it easier to pull through the loop. So I'm just making a little line on it where my waist is going to be, putting a safety pin through it, and then putting it into the hole that I left when I sewed it the first time, marked here with a pin. And thus begins the horror of having to tug elastic all the way through the giant seam that was the longest one of my life. Finally saw light at the end of the tunnel, pulled the elastic through and sewed it in an X pattern, which is usually how I like to sew elastic. It just holds better and doesn't budge, but still allows the stretch needed for the waistband. I'm sewing down the hole that I made in order to put the elastic into the skirt and stretching the elastic around the waist so that it all lays the correct way. The elastic is put into the skirt on the outer shell, we can now work with the lining. So I'm zigzag stitching the whole lining because I'm not going to be hemming the top of it, so I don't want it to fray. I'm matching up the seams on the sides and one down the back from the lining to the skirt so I know where this elastic needs to meet up on the edges. The difficult part about this is that one piece has elastic in it and the other piece does not, but we're trying to match it up so there's no extra bulk in some places and no elastic in others. So the key to this is to match up your side seams and then stretch the elastic as you're sewing, which is exactly what I'm doing here, and it is quite difficult to have it feed through the machine while you're stretching it. While sewing this lining into the skirt, I wanted to make sure to not get any of the elastic in my seam because then it would mess up the way that the elastic was gonna stretch in certain parts. So just stay off of the elastic and right below the binding and you'll be fine. After finishing the skirt and trying on the whole set, I realized that the shirt was just a little long and wasn't giving the full effect that I wanted. So I needed to move the ruffle at the bottom of the shirt up a couple of inches. So I'm chopping it off and pinning it back on exactly where this pin is across the whole shirt. Making sure that this was straight across this shirt and fit the right way was insane. And I'm so proud of myself, honestly, for getting this done. <laughs> After pinning it across, I sewed all the way along the seam that was already still left on the ruffle, but onto the shirt a couple of inches up. Cut off the excess fabric that was left from the lining and voila. Holy cow, this was such a good place to start. It turned out exactly like I wanted it to and I am so excited. How adorable with just like some huge diva sunglasses, a bunch of gold jewelry and some platform sandals. You're good to go. It's lined, ready, and dramatic, but beautiful and light. Loving it. Took it from kind of an oversized bohemian dress to this adorable little white two-piece set. On to the next piece. The next piece that we are going to flip on this little thrift flip series episode are these amazing denim shorts. They are the ultimate mom short. I honestly love these. I thought I would wear them a lot more than I do. And so since I don't, I have some ideas to flip them. And I was super, super inspired by really this one picture. How stinking cute 
are these patchwork denim shorts. First of all, they're super rough and have those long shredded edges and I love good patchwork, but especially when those patches mean something to you. So how fun to take something that I don't wear and make it some kind of piece of memorabilia. And I have this stack of patches from basically everywhere that I've been. I collect patches, magnets, and stickers. So many patches that I'm gonna show you today. As you can see, these are the ultimate mom jean short. It's got the edge that is like folded over and the super long inseam, the buttons at the crotch, vintage shorts, and the wash on them is so vintage. I'm not that much of a denim wearer, and if I do wear denim, it's a very standout piece. So we're going to change these shorts into something that I will wear all summer long by basically making them a photo album that I can wear with my patches. So I am so excited to have my little world traveler jean shorts. So let's do it. These shorts are hopefully going to be relatively easy until we get to the patches because all I really want to do is to take them up on the hem or shorten them in normal talk and then rough them up to give them a distressed look. So I'm pinning where I want it to go and then I'm cutting about an inch and a half below where that is because I have such a problem with cutting denim shorts and then realizing that I cut them too short. So I always cut them way too long first and then continue to cut from there after I try them on. So here you can see I tried them on the first time and no I did not button them all the way because a button flies hard sometimes. I'm gonna roll them again to get the actual length that I want and then make that final chop so I can start distressing. Lame factoid of the day, I got a hand cramp cutting these shorts because it's such thick denim. So mind your hands and power through because it is worth it. So once I had the hem done, I flipped it over to match it up. This is generally how I do denim shorts. I cut one leg to the correct length and then I fold it over so that you can get the same angle on both and they're not lopsided. So we chopped them up and these are the lengths that I want them now so we're gonna start fraying them and patching them. So this is where the interesting part comes in because I'm basically just gonna take scissors and scuff the heck out of the bottom of these pants. I'm making tiny incisions across the bottom, incisions such a fancy word, and then just roughing it to get those pieces of thread out of the denim. So what makes jeans frayed is taking the threads that are horizontal out of the bottom and allowing the vertical threads to just be free. So we are freeing the vertical threads here and pulling some pieces down so that they make those cute long threads that hang out of the bottom. And you can see that our shorts are starting to look absolutely adorable and very distressed. I also like to take my fingernails and just scratch them. It's basically just pulling all of the pieces out until you find a look that you like. So I could go full distress, but I'm just going to stress them out a little bit. Distress the other side in the same exact way. And this is the part that I really think makes these shorts look authentically distressed and not just frayed at the bottom. I take my scissors and kind of cut some edges of the jean around the button fly and pocket and waistband and then rough those edges the same way that I did the bottom. Now that the shorts are frayed we can start going on to our patches and so these are a bunch of my cute little patches from all my various travels so I'm gonna lay my shorts flat and start putting them all over the shorts so that I can pin them down in order to sew them. There's absolutely no rhyme or reason to this I just put them where I like them. Pinned them down and began one of the most intense sewing excursions I have ever embarked on. I had to sew each patch individually obviously. I also also tore the head off of so many pins, which made pulling these pins out so much more difficult. So you can see me here struggling to get this pin out, but I finally got it out and could continue sewing. I went after these patches by sewing them around the border. There's usually a thick border that you can sew through where your thread won't show, but since I had several different colored patches with different colored borders, I had to change the thread so many times on these shorts. I found that the round patches were absolutely the most difficult, and I had to start and stop my stitch several times so I could get every edge of the patch to make sure it wouldn't fall off. Usually I would iron these patches down before ever starting to sew them, but I do not have an iron currently, so I'm just going through it and sewing them down. I got very acquainted with my sewing machine and how to change thread on it, so now I'm like a master because I had to do this so many times for these patches. You can see here one of the more difficult shapes that I had to sew and me adjusting each time that I needed to sew a different side of it. And then I snipped all of the threads, which there were so many threads because there were so many stitches, and holy cuteness, they're done. my 
goodness, these are more than I ever thought they would be. <laughs> I am obsessed. The little rough edge on the bottom is so cute. And all of the patches, you guys. Ugh, I'm trying to jump so you can see them because I love them so much. Oh my gosh, this one is just so good. And it's just like a little memory book. I love them. Let's keep going. This next piece is probably one of the more quintessential well-loved clothing thrift flips. It is this adorable two-piece set that we are going to take in and up and crop, of course, and make into an adorable 50 style set. So my inspiration for this is that perfect vintage set that has the cigarette pant with the crop and then the little cropped top. Usually they would tuck it in, but I love a little bit of skin in the spring and summer. So I'm gonna go after that with this piece. It's a little bit too big. The orange on it is just this sherberty, almost thick linen feel. It's also got a good shape to it because of the darts down the front. And then the pants are elastic in the back and the elastic is still intact, which is rare for vintage pieces. I also love that this is a vest that unbuttons too so it can kind of be worn as like a piece over the top of another shirt. Overall this is going to be a really solid little flip and I'm really excited for all of this. Let's do it! Starting again with the highly sought after armpit shot, but before that, I cannot get over these dang shorts. Oh my gosh. So I am pinning it in the side because I need to take the shirt in and I'm gonna crop it. So I'm pinning where I want that crop to be. Laying it as flat as possible and cropping it somewhat first so I can sew the sides down and don't have to do a super long seam. Flipping it inside out because this is how you sew things. Yeah, you've made it this far. And pinning down those sides the couple inches that I needed to take it in. Can you guess what we're gonna do after we pin it down? You got it right, we're gonna sew it. This was the best fabric I think I have ever sewn. It was the perfect weight and it just glided through the machine. It was absolutely amazing. I did do a zigzag stitch up the side that's just gonna keep the fabric from fraying on the inside of the shirt and finishing that stitch without a serger. And I sewed that seam down. Okay, I am loving this little top. Look how cute. So we're gonna take this up and hem it across the bottom. Right now I'm kind of loving it over this cheetah dress. I always crop my shirts last because it finishes all of your edges nicely and sometimes when you take a shirt in, it can mess with the length of it. So I'm taking where I had that pin and folding it over to create that hem. I'm going to be zigzag stitching the bottom of this because I don't want to have to double fold it to have a bulky hem. This next part is a little odd, but I think it does a really good job of finishing the hem beautifully. So I take the part of the button placket that's going to be folded over and I fold a little corner in it so there aren't any frayed edges poking out. Then pin the hem all the way around so it's all the same same length and sew it down. Finish my edges at the armpit and hem and complete the shirt. It is done and I am so excited to move on to the pants. Look how cute. Let's do the pants now. We are gonna take these from too big and baggy to too cute and sassy. <laughs> so I have to pin at the waist and down the leg a little bit. And once we have all of the size taken in that we want to take in, I am laying them flat, moving my pins to the outside because I did not try them on inside out like I should have. Of, and sewing down those edges all the way down the leg. Another super long seam for this video. Sewing down the other side, cutting off the excess fabric from the inside of that seam, which this gave me another hand cramp. I have a problem, guys. <laughs> but how easy, I finished my edges, cut off my extra little seams, and these pants were done. My goodness, how cute did this one turn out? I am dying over this because I've been wanting a set like this and this cute peach feels like a perfect nod to that 50s set but also that 70s set and I am loving it. That was all of the looks that I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I love these thrift flips and I'm so glad y'all are loving them too. Comment below and let me know which piece was your favorite flip. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and have a super creatively inspired day. Thanks for watching. You are well loved. Bye.